Okay, so continuing on with our lecture on connective tissue, our last tissue we discussed was the uh, dense connective tissue, regular and irregular. Um, we said we said that the uh, dense irregular connective tissue it, it's uh, bundles of non-parallel collagen fibers. Um, the types of cells are fibroblast, and examples of locations are dermis of skin, joints, and joint capsules. And then we have the uh, dense connective tissue uh, regular, and we said those are bundles of parallel collagen fibers. Uh, the cells themselves are fibroblast, and they make up tendons, uh, most uh, ligaments, And you can see that in the picture there. Okay, so our, our, our next group would be cartilage. So we have the, the mesenchyme uh, developing in the chondroblast, which forms the chondrocyte. And uh, this is a class of tissue that we call cartilage. And we have three types here, hyaline cartilage, fibrocartilage, and elastic cartilage. Hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage, uh, the structure of the matrix includes a fine collagen fibers. Um, we have both chondroblast and chondrocytes as types of cells formed here. And basically what we see in hyaline cartilage is we have uh, in locations where we have the ends of the long bones, uh, rib cartilage, and nose. So uh, hyaline cartilage, its description it's an amorphous but firm matrix. Amorphous means it could change. So uh, amorphous but firm matrix, collagen fibers form an uh, imperceptible network of chondroblasts which produce the matrix and when mature you get the chondrocytes which line the lacunae. Uh, function is for support and reinforcement. Uh, it has a resilient cushioning properties and resists compressive stress. Um, and, and that's uh, uh, partly why we do see it at the end of long bones. Um, it's also found uh, in as co uh, costal cartilage of the ribs. So you see the, the costal cartilage here in the rib cage. And cartilage of the nose, trachea, and larynx. So that would be hyaline cartilage. Cartilage itself is made up of cells uh, that are called chondrocytes, and the small chambers that these cell, cells lie in are, is called the, the lacunae. Um, the lacunae are separated by the matrix that is uh, solid and, and flexible. Um, immature chondrocytes are called chondroblasts, and chondroblasts help the cartilage to grow. So hyaline cartilage itself is uh, the most common type of cartilage. It's strong and durable but flexible. In the microscope it has that glassy white opaque appearance. The next type of cartilage is what we call elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage um, is similar to hyaline cartilage, but it has more elastic fibers in the matrix. Um, its functions include it maintains the shape of a structure while allowing great flexibility. So picture your ear. You can bend your ear, you kind of fold it up there. So it still maintains shape, but it does have great flexibility there. Um, location, it supports the external layer and the epiglottis. So there you can see the, the chondrocytes in the, the uh, lacuna there, and you see the elastic fibers. So elastic cartilage does have many elastic fiber, fibers in addition to the collagen fibers, and it's for that reason that this type of cartilage is more flexible than hyaline cartilage. Our last type of cartilage is uh, fibrocartilage, 
its matrix is similar to but less firm than that in hyaline cartilage. Um, it's composed of thick collagen fibers that will predominate throughout this type of cartilage. Um, functions, uh, its tensile strength has the ability to absorb compressive shock. Uh, the location of, of fibrocartilage is the intervertebral discs, the pubic symphysis, and the disc of the knee joint. So, again, this type of cartilage has those strong collagen fibers. Um, this type of cartilage in it is used for absorbing shock and is found in between those structures that withstand tension and pressure. So, such as the disc between the vertebrae and the backbone and the pads in the knee joint. And if you look there, you can see the chondrocytes in the lacunae and the collagen fibers. Okay, our next type of connective tissue would be formed mesenchyme into osteoblast. So the cell descendants would be osteoblast are going to form cells called osteocytes. And you have osseous, which is bone. So osseous material is the class of tissue. And there are two types. We have the compact or ground bone. And you have the spongy uh, cancellous bone as the two types here. So bone itself, um, it's the most rigid of the connective tissues. Um, the two types of cells that are found in bone are osteoblast and osteocytes. And they form an extremely hard matrix of mineral salts, notably calcium salts, and deposit it around collagen fibers. Um, these minerals give bones their rigidity. Uh, the collagen fibers provide elasticity and strength, uh, much like the steel rods reinforce uh, concrete structure. So let's look. Uh, here we have uh, osseous bone. So what we see here is uh, a description. We have the osteocytes and the lacunae, and we have uh, its description is a hard calcified matrix containing many collagen fibers. Osteocytes lie in lacunae and it's uh, very well vascularized. And the functions here, bone supports and protects by enclosing and it provides uh, levers for the muscle to uh, act on. So it stores calcium and other minerals and fat marrow inside the bones, uh, is the site for uh, blood cell formation, hematopoiesis. Um, compact bone, if you look at that compact bone in the picture, so this would be osseous tissue or compact bone. Um, the compact bone consists of many cylindrical shaped units called osteons or havergian systems. So these are the, the havergian systems right in here. So there is a compact bone with the havergian system. And basically in an osteon, the matrix is deposited in a thin layer called the lamellae and that forms a concentric pattern around a tiny tube called the central canal. So here would be that central canal. And the canal contains nerve fibers and blood vessels. And it's the blood vessels that are going to bring the nutrients of the bone cells, which are called osteocytes, and that are located in these small hollows called lacunae between the lamellae. The nutrients can reach all of the cells because the minute canals called the uh, canal, canal nuclei contain thin extensions of the osteocytes and connect the osteocytes with one another in the central canals. So you could see that in the compact bone. This would be the Havergian canal system. Uh, the other type of bone would be spongy bone. Um, spongy bone, or, or, or what we refer to as the, if you look here, the cancellous bone. Um, spongy bone contains numerous bony bars and plates that are separated by irregular spaces. So although lighter than compact bone, spongy, spongy bone is still designed for strength. Um, it's like braces used for supports and buildings 
uh, the solid plates of spongy bone uh, uh, follow a, uh, lines of stress. Um, blood cells are also formed within red marrow of the spongy bone at the ends of certain long, long bones. So that is where a spongy bone is. So you see them at the ends of, of long bone there. <clears throat> Our, our last type of connective tissue is blood tissue and uh, hematopoietic stem cells will form blood cells or, or macrophages and the class would be blood. Blood cell formation and differentiation are quite complex and we'll study that uh, in the blood chapter. Um, blood is a connective tissue uh, formed by elements suspended in a liquid matrix called the plasma and there are three types of formed elements. There are the red blood cells called the erythrocytes, which carry oxygen. Uh, white blood cells are called leukocytes, which aid in fighting infection. And you have platelets. And platelets are called thrombocytes, which are important to the initiation of blood clotting. Um, platelets are not complete cells. Rather, they are fragments of giant cells uh, called megakaryocytes, which are found in bone marrow. So if you look, here we have blood. So here is its description. You have the red and white blood cells in a fluid matrix called the plasma. And the functions are transport of respiratory gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, waste, and other substances. So in, in red bone marrow, in red bone marrow, what we see is stem cells continually divide to produce new cells that mature into different types of blood cells. And the rate of the cell division is high because blood cells have that relatively short lifespan and must be replaced constantly. Um, blood is unlike any other type of connective tissue in that the extracellular matrix, that plasma, is not made, up, made by the cells of the tissue. The plasma is a mixture of different types of molecules that enter blood at its uh, various stages of origin. And if you look at, at the plasma, um, you could see the, the, in this picture, you could see the platelets. Uh, this would be a platelet here, that little guy right there. Um, you have the erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells, and you have leukocytes, which are, are, are white blood cells. And you have two different types of white blood cells here. You have a lymphocyte and a neutrophil. And basically how you identify uh, white blood cells is you have to look at their, their nucleus there. So that is it for connective tissue. Our, our next class of tissues will be uh, muscular tissue and then our final being the nervous tissue.